Welcome to On My Block Packers Podcast. I am your co-host, Mike Wall, along with Amon Green, Packers all-time leading rusher, Packers Hall of Famer, Wisconsin Hall of Famer, Sports Hall of Famer, I believe that's right, AG. Yeah. Amon, how you doing, bud? Man, I'm doing good. Uh, doing good. Good weekend. Well, it was a um, wife came in town, hang up, just kind of chilled out, watched some crazy movies on Apple, on Apple Plus. This is one movie called Infinity Pool. Okay. With uh, with the scar, one of the scar guard brothers, and okay, wait, time out. What? Oh, hey, scar. Is he was in scar guard? Yeah, he was in uh, if you remember the old vampire series on uh, HBO way back, probably like ten years ago. Uh, True, Blood. True Blood. True Blood. He was one of the vampires on there. He was the blonde one. So that's I think it's scar guard. Or I'm I'm destroying his last name. But oh, okay, that's his name. That's his last name. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I thought you were like you're giving like a physical description. No, 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 no. He's in this movie. His brother and his brother plays the new it. So his brother has been the it for the last Penny, Pennywise. Pennywise, yes, yeah, his brother. Um, so it's an acting family, you know. Um, why do you in, watch? Why do you watch these just jacked up movies? Just to see what like it, it was. It was just you know what. Let's see what this go where this goes. And it went down this rabbit hole that it was like it was like eyes wide shut. With Tom Cruise, it was similar to that, like really creepy sex and drinking and alcohol and just going whole to a whole nother area. Wait, what's it on Apple TV? It's on Apple TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Apple TV, man. And we're I'm sitting there, we're like, we're like hour into it. And I was like, now we got to finish it. She's like, what right. the hell are we watching? Yeah, you I'm feel like, yeah. I'm like, we you feel committed. It. It's, I'm, that's where I'm at. I'm committed. Like an hour in, we got to finish this. And so it just got more crazy. So it boiled down to was like they were cloning people and like it's weird like you got to watch it. I don't want to give up too much because it sounds very cool, very weird or cool at the same time. They were like cloned. I just I'll give one thing like I mentioned. He was killing his clone by halfway through the movie. I was like, what the OK, heck? so Infinity it was weird. Pool. I'll check it out. So it's called so- Infinity Pool. So uh, Maddox and I are bachelors this weekend. My my wife and my daughter are in North Carolina at soccer tournament. So we okay. watched uh, – Maddox wanted to watch this movie called Whiplash. It's about the dude who's a drummer. Yeah, I've seen it. It's, it's awesome. A good ass, yeah, it's a good-ass yeah, movie. J, JK something. Um, JC. Yeah, whatever his name is, dude. He's from, yeah. he's from Spider-Man. He was uh, – Yep, he was uh, – Jonas Jameson. He was yep. Jonas Jameson on Spider-Man. He's won a couple – he won Academy, at least one. Great actor. He was the teacher, and the one young kid was the, like the – the, uh, the the student Miles Teller. Trying to, yep, trying to learn from the best. In that okay, let me piece. let me hit this read real quick because I do want to actually talk about a, a lesson in that movie. <laughs> okay, with our yes. friends at Bet Online, want you to know that Bet Online remains your number one source for all your NBA playoff betting this season. Get your analysis of every play, prop, and point at Bet Online. You'll find the latest odds, bracket contests, team matchups, and game trends at Bet Online. Updated odds for everything from live games, the conference championships, right through to the NBA Finals. Bet Online is your NBA headquarters this season. So. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to sign up and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your bonus, betonline.ag, where the game starts. Before we get into anything else, this whiplash thing, okay, because it bothers yes. okay. Here's, I was trying to explain to my son, because I'm watching this movie, yeah. and the dialogue, first of all, with all, I love movies now because we're so inundated with CGI and nonsense. Yeah. I love movies that are dialogue movies. I love, I'll go, I'm going back and watching all the Tarantino movies. Now I just love dialogue movies. Great. Yeah. Great writing. The dialogue dialogue in this movie is good. Right. Mm -hmm. But it is, I was trying to explain to my son. I don't, we've been in all these different areas of of life, football and different sports and business and whatnot. And there's a certain way you can and can't talk to people. Right. And, and, that's probably maybe more extreme in, in these like high high profile environments like yeah. like football, like if you go work in an investment bank, the way they talk to you and whatnot. But there's a certain there's a certain thing that you and I would never allow to happen. There's a certain way you talk to us. This guy in this movie is JK talking Simmons. to these kids in yeah. a way. Yeah. It, talking to kids in a way. Well, I'm watching the whole movie. I'm like, and then he's like throwing drums against the wall, and I'm going, there's no way this is this doesn't make any sense. I'd this guy would be this guy would have those those drumstick shoved straight up his backside. You know what I mean? Yeah. There ain't no way this is happening. And Max is Max is just sitting there going like, this is, he's like, dad, I think this is how people talk to one another. I was like, I don't, I don't nah, know. In a certain setting, like J.K. Simmons character, uh, Terrence Fletcher, he's trying to like train them in the worst possible situation. So then when they go out in the real world, 
to be in an orchestra, they're the best of the best. They could take everything kind of like we had coaches like that. They were trying to beat you up mentally and you take it and then you get ready for the next level. It's like, no, nah, I'm already built for that life. So don't even go there unless you want to get punched in the face repeatedly. Sure. The, the the guy says in the movie Charlie Parker didn't become the bird you know the bird man until he got a symbol thrown at his head or something like that and you're right. you're going like okay that, maybe that's true and maybe that's how they based the that's what they based the movie on. that's how they built the story but I'm just thinking to myself like yeah and I'm old school man like I'm a, me I'm too not being like you know we're all, we, we're both kind of all about a little bit harsher than maybe today today's society is used to yeah but myself man this this would not. This it's tough. Would not end well, right? It, it wouldn't be. The we'll be fighting. I've never been in this would not end well. I would be but. fighting <laughs> at one of these sessions. I would have been fighting. Yeah, it was um a lot of shigulery. I would make it up, making my own words up. Shigulery going on there. So let's, anyway, let's, let's get, get to, to the news of the day, man. Jay yes, Hertz indeed. Yes, just got paid. I love. I love. This I love so it. Much. So five year extension. Yep. Two hundred fifty five million total. 106.305, 304 right. guaranteed, no yeah. trade clause. I saw that, which is great. Um, here's the thing. We we don't really know because it's an extension and this and that. But mm -hmm. here's here's kind of what we can ex assume. With 180 million guaranteed and it's five years, your, your mind immediately goes to this is probably a minimum three-year deal. So if you kind of look at it, you go, I just got – Three years, one hundred eighty million dollars, mm -hmm. because that mil that's the guaranteed money. Yep. And so now, well, there's a couple of things. Obviously, one congratula congratulations. Well, well congratulations, congratulations, earned Morrison. it, and, and I, he earned it, and he, oh, and he absolutely earned it. And I believe, um, I, I want to get the lady's name right. Who's who's the agent for uh, for for Jalen? Because I think it is a a precedent here that I believe she is the first African American female to Nicole Lynn. Nicole, Nicole Lynn. Lynn to hit just drop an absolute bomb on the National Football League with this mega deal. So congratulations mm -hmm. to her. And I believe she works for Clutch Sports. Um here's the thing that's kind of nuts, right? So we've been talking about Lamar Jackson for months now. Yes. And I think a lot of people are going, including this show. Why not sign a three-year deal for yeah, it's been whatever amount of time. I think we yeah. were talking about 50 a year. And so now you look at this deal, AG, and I know there's going to be – it's not going to be literally like 60-60-60. There's mm -hmm. going to be some incentives or, or – not incentives, excuse me. There's going to be some um, roster bonuses and different times of the year they're going to yeah. get all this money. But I bet you're essentially looking at a three-year deal worth $180 million, and in the back end of this, he's going to get another $75 million over the next two. Okay, does that, does yep. that sound about right? That sounds right to me. Yeah. So, so now you go back and you go, what does this mean for Lamar Jackson? Because a lot of people are thinking, Lamar, go play the minimum this year of games you have to play. Correct. Because Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts, Hurt, all, all these guys out. are going to reset the market. Mm -hmm. It just happened. It happened earlier. This is like, this is Christmas for Lamar Jackson, right? You or or am, or am I missing something? No, he could uh, come back, you know, take the contract that's been offered, the unrestricted deal, the $32 million, and then play out. Hopefully everything goes as usual where he's, you know, plays healthy, does what he does on the football field. And now he could find himself sitting in kind of like we were just talking about one guy we compared everything going on with him was uh, Kirk Cousins coming in that market at the right time mm -hmm. to get reset. So now he's going to be in that Kirk Cousins neighborhood getting paid again, you know, this big money, but then he could set another three-year deal. And then three years later, two years later, he's hitting the market again. So that, this is what Lamar has to, I say, be paying attention to right now, fully aware and be like, you know what, let me just go play ball and now get the drama behind me and get my, uh, get ready for OTAs. You got OTAs in less than a month here going on for a lot of NFL team. That's interesting. So, I, hmm. So you think he should just play this, see if I'm him, I'm going, uh, I'd, I'm going to the Ravens right now and just I'm tweeting or texting, whatever I like, however I communicate with them. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to keep sending them this contract every day. But yeah. I, I think that's one, fair. that's the other option. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, instead of, because right now, if, I mean, I, quite frankly, bro, if I'm Lamar Jackson and again, I'm, I'm probably, I might be looking at this the wrong way, but I'm looking at this as a three year deal for 60 million a year. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the back end's going to get loaded. And, you know, are they going to be able to like finish the five years before they extend them again, et cetera, et cetera. The cap's right. going to be higher. 
I'm looking at it like if I'm Lamar Jackson, I've been an MVP. Like I've had success in this league. I'm, I, you know, I don't know if some some people might like Hurts better. Some people like Jackson better. They're yeah. undeniably both top five, six quarterbacks in the National Football League when healthy. Yeah. So, with all that being said, you have to look at it and go. If I'm Lamar Jackson, I don't know if I'm playing for thirty two million dollars. True. Yeah. I know I mean, that sounds ridiculous coming coming from us, but you yeah, know, in that in that business. It's so many, yeah, so many ways to skin a cat here. And then that was like you mentioned. I mentioned one option. You brought up another option. And also what you know everybody's weighing why Jalen Hurts got that contract, other than his gameplay during the season, is they got to his team to he got his team to the Super Bowl with the weapons he had. So then that's the other little leverage thing that could hold over Lamar's head where he has not been. He has been to the playoffs, won some games, um, got MVP, but not being in the big game. Obviously, that separates, which we know, as we know, the media separates players. And, and levels the playing field or unlevels the playing field saying this guy has a Super Bowl or a Super Bowl appearance, win or lose, then that's different from just a, a good player that we know should be getting a, a contract that he well de- deserves. 100% agree with you. And this, But this does go to the point that we talked about with Ben Roethlisberger last week. Ben Roethlisberger is talking about, well, you don't fear him from the pocket and this and that. And then you start mm-hmm. looking at Ben Roethlisberger's um, – uh, his weapons on offense over the yes. course of his career. Yes. And then you look at what uh, Lamar, Lamar Jackson's had. Now, I bring that up because let's look at the Philadelphia Eagle roster. <laughs> okay, if you want to talk about a roster building. They got a good roster. A.J. Brown. Hmm. Yeah, there you Devontae go. Devontae Smith, first rounder, right? Yep. Quez Watkins. Now you got – they found Jordan Mulata, uh, you know, rugby player in Australia. Landon Dickerson, Jason Kelsey, uh, Lane Johnson, first round pick. Right. Dallas Goddard, second round pick. Okay. Brandon yeah. Graham, first round pick. You go back to last year. You, or Fletcher, I mean, all those guys on defense. Yeah, that exactly. is a, just offensively, though, that is, we think that is one of the best, best built rosters in the National Football League. Yes. And then, oh, by the way, this guy just happens to ball out, like gets a lot better from year one to year two. Mm-hmm. And now he gets what he deserves. Lamar Jackson's never had that. And he's playing at that level. If he's anywhere near that level, it actually, it, yeah, it just goes to show like how special he is, really. Yes, right? So it does. It, it it just shows everything from, you know, he's working with B talent, we'll say, compared to what Jalen's working with, you know. And over the years, he's made it work. He's he's got his team to separate, you know, to the playoffs. He's got his team to win the division. He's been competitive in the rivalry matchups and able to, you know, obviously overall keep his body mostly healthy. Uh, and this last year, we know that him coming back was more of a, a con, you know, it was a posturing thing uh, when he had the injury to his knee and didn't play for those couple of weeks or the last month of the season. He was looking, thinking business wise in terms of me coming back. And if they're not going to offer me now during the season, then let me just and this makes me I'm getting myself healthy. So then when I come back and play and protect myself. So that was more we figured that what, what it was and it, and, it, and it is so. So with that said, we're talking about we'll move over to the Packers now. I mean, yeah. again, congratulations to, to Jalen Hurts. And yeah, honestly, yeah. like we've talked about that guy for a while. He's one of he's so hard not to like. Like I just yeah, I, you just love everything about the kid. You love the struggle that he went through, how he came out the other side. Yeah. It's just hard not to root for him. Every time he you know is in front of a microphone, you just love everything he has to say. You love his work ethic. So it's just good to see when good guys win, it's just you love it, man. You absolutely yep. love it. So exactly. I wanted to talk about we talk about roster building, talk about the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> All right. Let's talk, let's talk about Green Bay Packers, right? So yes, let's, let's, let's do it. There's a lot of there's a lot of noise about are the Packers going to draft some skill guys early in this draft? Is it wide receiver? Is it tight end? Mm-hmm. And you start looking back. And the last two guys we played with that are first round picks that are at those positions. You had Javon Walker, obviously, and then you had yeah. Franks. Yeah. Okay. Now, what is I think interesting um, is that I, I guess we're making the assumption that Ron Wolf, Sherm, Goody, mm-hmm. we just think that Hall of Fame quarterbacks can kind of handle their business and we can backfill this on on the other end as mm-hmm. far as as far as what the green bay packers are capable of and i just let's go th- i mean just real quick you go back through from 2003 right you think about roster building right 
Nick Bar first here's our first round draft picks. And I know like we can you can go all through all seven picks, and the Packers have drafted well in a lot of positions. Uh -huh. But let's look at impact players, what you expect in the first round. Nick Barnett, linebacker, Oregon State, had a good career. Yeah. Ahmad Carroll, cornerback, not we good. Already, we already not know. Good. Yeah, yeah, not good. Aaron Rodgers, okay. Solid. Then, then they took the fifth pick in the draft. They took A.J. Hawk, fifth pick in the draft. Now, A.J. had a nice career, fifth pick in the draft. That's a monster play for a middle linebacker back yeah, then. I think that's like a running back going high. Basically. Yeah, you, you kind of look at that and go, maybe that wasn't – not that AJ wasn't a good player. Maybe that wasn't the best move. Justin Harold. Now you start getting into it a little bit. Justin Harold, D tackle, from Tennessee. BJ Raji, great pickup. Yeah, Boston he was. College. Clay, Clay, Clay Matthews, rookie year. Yeah. yeah, Clay Matthews, great pickup from USC. Balaga, great pickup from Iowa. Iowa. Derek Sherrard didn't play a lot for Mississippi State. Nick Perry, probably a miss at USC. Danton Jones, probably a miss at UCLA. Yeah. Clinton Dix, obviously a good a good pickup. Probably didn't have okay. the length of career in Green Bay that we wanted. Yep. Demarius Randall, safety, not mm. what we're looking for. No. Kenny, Kenny Clark, Jair Alexander, back to back. They didn't have a pick in 2017. You go, Rashawn Gary's turned out to be a great pick. Darnell yep. Savage in the second pick in the first round in uh, 2019 out of Maryland. Mm. Yeah, right? 50, so, 50, so. 50 50. And then we got Jordan Love. Eric Stokes, Quay Walker, and then obviously at the at the second pick with Devontae Wyatt. So we don't know how those guys are going to turn out. So really the last four of those guys we don't know yet. But when you look back, you know, you just start thinking about how you want to build your roster, AG, and like yeah. what's important to you. And, and and I was thinking about like we just talked about the Philadelphia Eagles, but you know, they just they just paid their quarterback. But why are they able to do that? Well, dude, l listen to their draft picks over the last since 2003. Hmm. Jerome McDougal, defensive end. Sean Andrews, tackle, baller. Mike yeah. Pattinson, D tackle, good player. Broder Bunchby, Florida State, D tackle, good player. No pick, no pick. Jeremy Macklin, baller. Brandon yeah. Graham, baller. baller. Danny Watkins, missed. Fletcher Cox, baller. Lane Johnson, baller. Marcus Smith, missed. Nelson Aguilar, baller. Carson Wentz had a couple good years and then got hurt. Honestly, like probably yeah. not a bad pick. Ended up being a bad culture fit in the building. Correct. Derek Derek Barnett, good player, no pick. Andre Dillard. Wait and see. Mm -hmm. Jalen Rager, wait and see. Devontae Smith, baller. Jordan Davis, baller. Yes. I mean, different, man. Like, they're hitting on those first-round picks like 80%, not yeah. 50. Nah. Yeah, and that just, that just, that just goes through the, um, the education, the expertise of the people choosing these players. That's where it boils down to. People that have experience, you know, I remember sitting around having several conversations with Ron Wolf um, and how he looked at myself, looked at Threat, looked at other players that he chosen over the years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it was he had a football IQ that obviously as players we know makes sense. You know, mm -hmm. he looked at me and he said that I knew Mike Holmgren, you were in his doghouse. But what I liked about you, you averaged almost four yards a carry. So that's a first down every two carries pretty much. You know, and he's like that. Yeah, I'll take you. You know, you, you fumble the ball. Every running back fumbles the ball. That's how he, this was a conversation we're having. Every yeah. quarterback throws interceptions. Yeah. DB is going to make ta missed tackles or missed interceptions. But you what had you a, over your average. Exactly. Over the average, you showed up. He said, that's what I want to deal with. That's when I, that's why I was like, I'll take him. No problem. You want to get rid of him, um, Mike Holmgren, you know. So hearing that, it's just showing you, okay, now the people that are choosing, what are their expertise? What are they really looking at when they look at the stats? What stats jump out to them that they should not be picking a player off of, but looking at the certain stats that work for running backs, for quarterbacks, for D linemen, linebackers, punters, kickers, wide receivers. Find those. It's only one or two stats that'll tell you the this is a guy I want on my team. And then after that, it's the intangibles. Are they a leader in the locker room? Are they a follower? Are they somebody that's gonna show up? Are they are they anxiety? They have anxiety in certain situations mm -hmm. uh, on a, in a big game in practice or whatever. You know, are there a problem off the field? You find that out after the fact in your questioning beyond the football field, basically. And so that's what that's one thing that's got to be questioned here. Yeah, there's some philosophy too, right? There's exactly. two things. I think there's there's one obvious glaring thing here is that they didn't have a Hall of Fame quarterback on the Philadelphia no. Eagles, so no. so they're constructing a team. I mean, this is because this is kind of the conversation, right? They had Donovan did, did, McNabb during those years, right? But let's be—I mean, like, I mean, look, Donovan McNabb was a good player, but let's be real honest player, about Donovan McNabb versus 
versus Brett or Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, not, yeah, not a Hall of Famer. Hey, yeah, he's, he's, not, it's not, he's not the same guy. Um, the way that I look at this, though, is if the argument is, have we treated the draft differently because we have these players, like we have this Hall of Fame players on offense, right? Have we treated it differently? It looks like yeah. that. It, the answer is yes. yes. And then the, then the other thing is, when you go back and you look at some of these picks, and I always go back to uh, uh, what was the kid, the defensive end from Florida State that was Jamal Reynolds. Oh, Jamal Reynolds. Yeah. Jamal Reynolds. I just remember we just went, wait, what? And I, I look, I not a bad, not a, not like a bad human, but you just you went, well, no, 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 no. You, there's no way he's a top ten draft. Pick. Like there's just, there's no yeah. way that was true. And you look at some of these guys. I mean, you look. I, I just remember the first time I saw Nick Perry. I went, okay, if you would have asked your tackle if Nick Perry was going to be a baller, he would have said no because he's not tall. And, like the, his mm -hmm. body dimensions, there's nothing about him that scares me. Correct. So I don't, therefore, I don't pick up that kind of player, right? Danton Jones, kind of the same thing. Like you just start looking at some of these guys and you go, are they, pick, are you picking for value? Are you picking best position? Exactly. Are you, you know, are there positional needs? Is the best player available? How do you think about your draft? And then if it is, because you hope it's always best player available, right? Mm -hmm. And then if that's the case, AG, how do you weight and value specific positions? In other words, how do you value guards versus running backs versus safeties? For, you know what I mean? Yeah. You take yeah. your probably your your quarterback, left tackle, defensive end, cornerback for now. How does everybody else drop? And is there somebody so special, a guard, a Quentin Nelson? Is there somebody so right. special that he leapfrogs ahead of somebody else? That's what's always interesting about these drafts that you don't understand. That there's a there's a there's a history with Goody as we look to this future draft. But gosh, when I look at this, I go, he's probably going to have to tack because they, he just doesn't have a quarterback anymore, right? No, you know, and you know, with that, you got to build. You got to give that player some uh, support and you got to build from the all line through the D line and uh, through the linebackers and then DBs and then wires. You got to build from the inside out, basically, because you, you got to build from you mean from like the line of scrimmage, the line of scrimmage out. Yeah, you, that's how I build. If I'm a GM, I'm building. I'm finding the, the meanest, nastiest offensive alignment, defense alignment so they could beat each other to get better. But then from there, I'm looking for the smartest, most intelligent quarterback, physical, is a, has, a, has a fight about him, and then on so forth for every position. Have this mindset of uh, we're going to grind it out. We're going to beat you up. This is football. We're going to be physical. But then at certain positions, tight end, another one. Hey, I'm looking for a guy who's run, who, uh, who blocks and runs routes, who does that job, do both of those jobs, mm -hmm. and knows how to be a team leader. Like certain team leaders, you want certain positions. You know, having a team leader from the O-line, having a team leader from the tight end position, you want to try to find that uh, beyond the ability, like I mentioned. The ability is one thing, but it's like how you come in my locker room and how you mold into the other players that are already there. I'm also looking at that. If you don't mold in, sink, you know, come in and boom, boom, it, it works, then we're going to have conversations. Eventually, we're going to figure something out. If you're not mentally adjusting yourself or a guy that it just doesn't fit, then we're going to, you know, we're going to have to move you, uh, get you out of here because the locker room is not gelling together. You know, it's you think of the the other, the last two teams in the Super Bowl, and I think that Andy Reid in particular has had a lot to do with the Kansas City Chiefs. So I can't remember mm -hmm. exactly what year he what year he showed up there, but you just seen the same time almost ten years, if not longer. Yeah, see, but you look at the same time period. First round draft picks again: Derek Johnson, baller; Tom Ali, baller; Dwayne Bow, baller; Glenn Dorsey, baller; Brandon Albert, baller; Tyson Jackson, don't know him; Eric Berry, baller; John Baldwin. Don Terry Poe, baller. Eric Fisher, probably the worst pick in their history is picking Eric Fisher number one overall, right? And he yeah, and he had he a good career. He had a good career as a left tackle, but like yeah. not really that guy, right? right? D Ford, Marcus Peters, pretty good players. Yes. Patrick Mahomes, Clyde, uh, mm -hmm. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, LSU running back. Like maybe a reach looking back now just because of the injury, but like even Correct. a first round pick, but boy, he sure had a good first year as, as I recall. Yep. Now you got Trent McDuffie and George Car Karloftis cornerback defensive end. Like Man. it just looks like philosophically there's some teams that a lot of it has to do with Patrick Mahomes being there. A lot of it has yeah. to do with Andy Reid being there and Goody can't control that. I get that. Right. Yeah. But 
but there's those, always a but. It's a those, but here. Those two teams look like when you when you just look at that, and then hey, remember the Chiefs lose the Super Bowl because their offensive line sucks. So yeah, what do they do? Were. They just go buy a bunch of offensive linemen, and then they win the Super Bowl. Like it, you know what I mean? It just kind of like those are the things. It's the obvious things that should be done. Like you see that. I see that. We all see that as players. It's like, okay, I already knew, and you probably knew too. I remember saying to friends and family, I said, the Chiefs not going to win. They, they most likely will not win. If they win this game, it will be a surprise. Right. Because Pat Mahomes, he has a turf toe or he had a, something else going on with his body. But then on top of that, all the offensive linemen were hurt. <laughs> so he has nobody protected him for him to do what he can do to buy time, make time, or have time to throw the ball against his uh, – a top team like they were playing against in that Super Bowl. So. Let me ask you this. <clears throat> Running backs, one of these positions, it's kind of been kicked out of the first round. Yes. Because it has a, because of the contract value. It's 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 such a weird place to be. And now you see some of these, you know, these other yeah. safety is a position, linebacker is a position where the liabilities now. Where, yeah. where you where you look at it and you go, okay, some of these guys are big time players, but Saquon Barkley situation right now, mm -hmm. you just go, um, I just want to hear because you were a running back, a high level running back, a guy mm -hmm. that wasn't a first round draft pick, but you could make the argument that not only you should have been, but you ended up being a, you know, a, a, a if not the most valuable player on a couple of teams you played on. Right. So from an offensive standpoint, at least. So like when you're thinking about if you're drafting team, put your GM hat on, is your mm -hmm. philosophy, are you drafting best on the board? Are you drafting need? Like what is your, what is, what is the way you approach these different positions knowing that everybody else is going, you know, like you, even if the running backs that you're, if you have the number one pick and the running backs the number one guy on your board, you're probably going to draft down. I get that. Like you're not right. going to pick them up number one, but like, how do you see that with all these different positions? Yeah. Regardless of the position I'm drafting for need, what I need at that position or what I need for my team to get better. Okay. Um, so if I need a quarterback, I'm drafting a quarterback. If I need old line, what if you don't, what if there's not a good quarterback? Right. If it's not a quarterback, you know what? All right, I'm gonna then get more old linemen, you know, and it's and stock up because yeah. having old linemen, having D linemen, guys that are quality picks, because I've I've already done my research as a GM. I've got my scouts, they they let to me, they let me know everything they needed and that I needed to know to make these decisions. So, right, we get there. The quarterback that I like is not there from stature to yardage to leadership okay he's not there then i'm going to my next best position then it's going to be anywhere on office alignment anywhere on the d lineman find me the top quality d lineman o lineman that we could draft in the first round that we go second round and any you know later picks then then later on if it's a quarterback that shows up later in the rounds mm -hmm. i'm within hey i like this kid okay he's a lower pick there's a lot of there's no risk it's no it's a it's a smaller risk reward here now you get a third round to lower quarterback he might be scrappy like a purdy he comes in here, gets into the playbook, learns his team, learns the offense, and then maybe, you know, way the stars align, it works out, boom. Yep. All right? But at the end of the day, I'm least – I'm feeling better about myself where I know I help my team get better because I go in positions and drafted them higher because it is quality player of what the school, you know, where they were at, Alabama, Michigan, you know, you look at those for alignment. You look at those for D-alignment. As rushers, those schools, USC, that have the uh, athletic ability – the size of whatever aggressiveness you look for that because you know that is where the game starts and ends in the interior. So that's how so I'm you, so in, say it another way, you have like a Venn diagram where you have a circle that is your you have a need board and yep. then you have you have best player available board and wherever they overlap is obviously you're going to look at that. I think that's what most most guys are, are, are the way they're thinking about it. All right. But then the realist, like realistically, like especially early, because you have like you have, I feel like you have to make an impact. In, like your first round, second round pick, like you got to come in and be able to make an impact. Yes, you do. So, you do. so for me, this is where it gets interesting. Of like, who's best available? But then I have to have my own philosophy, like the Philadelphia Eagles seem to. Like we're going to have the best offensive defensive lines in football. Easy. My best available is probably at least early is probably going to be. Offensive line, defensive line, edge rusher, outside linebacker, whatever you want. Like that's, mm -hmm. I probably am not going to say slot wide receiver or no. any of these other positions. No. It's going to be one of those positions, right? So I don't care if I have Philadelphia Eagles. They had seven guys last year, eight guys that could rush the pass. And then right. they just, and then they brought in Robert Quinn. You know what I mean? They just, uh, they, kept, right. they, kept, they keep bringing, they keep drafting, developing, and then they'll, they'll backfill with free agency. So 
it just makes a lot of sense. I'll be interested to see if philosophically Green Bay has to change now because I, you know, for me, it's like if you're going to bring in a, a, a tight end or wide receiver that's young, I'm kind of now like, okay, go for it because Jordan loves learning on the job too. Exactly. Like, you you don't have to know, you don't have to be at Aaron Rodgers level anymore. You can be mm-hmm. at his level. Exactly. And grow together. In, in, in that matter too, uh, try to make the offense, you know, more, you know, in a two or three year process, they're all there together, been fighting through the struggle of getting better and getting back on track, basically. Woody Johnson, uh, there, it's a report and I don't know, you know, who knows if it's true or not, but it makes sense. So they had, a, they had some compensation that was going to be agreed on. And then Woody Johnson found out that Aaron went on the McAfee show and said, I was, he was 90% retired coming out of the dark, going into the darkness. Uh, and they switch. Do you now? What do you if you're if you're what do you do if you're sitting there at the New York Jets? Like here's right. you start putting your your hat on. You go. Well, he said he was ninety percent done. Now, like, what does that compensation look like? Because you know, the draft's getting closer, and I know that if yeah. if, if you wait till June first, then the Packers can can spread the ninety million dead cap over two years. So there's. There's some value there and maybe waiting if, or there's not value, but if they decide to wait, they can justify it that way. Yeah. But God, if you're, I mean, you, you've, you let Joe Douglas do his job. You let Goody do their, they're, they're talking. And then the owner comes in, who's not a football guy. Right. But he mm-hmm. does own the team yeah. and he sees that and he goes, and we're speculating here, but I, you, this is not a, this is not a leap for a yeah. guy to go. You want me to spend what, or you want us to give up what I'm going to look like. I'm going to look like a fool yeah. if this guy plays one season. Yeah, it's a it's a lot of I say posturing that's being caused by that comment right there and you got to you got to what you got to talk if you have your option opportunities to talk to Aaron as as the Jets being GM owner if he's serious about I mean we know he's serious going. I'm like, let's have a conversation. Um you make a comments like this rubs me a certain way. I need to know something. You know, I need to ask these questions. I, are you in? You know, because if you're in only, and how long are you in for? Because AG, I'm, they were out in San Diego for. They flew. Long. They flew everybody out, and then exactly. they, you know what I'm saying. So, well, I guess. I guess what, I, my reaction is to what you're saying is, how did they not know? Right. Amy just when he say this last week. Is this something like a week? Well, week? so he this happened probably a month ago now. Oh, right? as, okay. far, as, as far as like they yeah. went out, they went out to San Diego or, or LA. Well, that part, yes, that part I know. And yeah. then after that conversation, he went on he McAfee and said and made the statement. And so now it's coming out like they had compensation agreed on, and Woody Johnson here has heard that, and he's that's why everything kind of blew up. That's why it slowed down. Yeah. So it's like this, uh, and I kind of mentioned this. I hit on it last week. Hey, either you win or you're not. So if you're hundred percent in a comment like this, it's not going to rattle you um, because you got to, that's where you're at with, with Aaron, where he's at and making his decisions every off season. He's obviously for most people, he's flipping back and forth. He's in, he's not in, he's retiring. He's not retiring. It's like, you know what? I'm not going to mess around with this roller coaster ride. I'm going to, I'm going to step off and I'm going to control me. I'm going to think about what I, as a GM and an owner, what we already decided, we're going to talk to this guy. We want him in here. If it's two years, three years, okay, we're going to have to deal with it. And then obviously if it's something where he comes here for one year and he's out, we're going to have to suck it up. I say for just to keep your mind and not stress out. Bro, okay, yeah. AG, right. if, if you if you knew 75% certain that he was going to play one year, would you even waste your time with this? If I knew, like, yeah, more than 80%, no, nah, I'm not wasting my time with this. Not doing if it, I, right? Right. It's not worth it. No, not it's, worth not. It. No, it's not. The chances of you winning a Super Bowl because you brought in one guy – is very now, good. now they did it with Regardless Stafford. The yeah, the Stafford did it. You can, I mean, you start pointing around guys and go, okay, yeah. this has happened, but it was other factors, as we know, defensively. They had guys on there that are game changers, as we know, Jalen, um, Aaron Donald. So, AJ yeah, Dillon came out with a new book. I saw that. <laughs> Quad, Quadzilla finds his footing, AG. Now, there's a couple things here. Uh, uh one, I suppose. Should we buy a copy and support him? I think the answer is obviously yes. I know what I'm getting you, I, I know what I'm getting you for uh, for draft day's present. Uh, I'm just AJ Dillon is such a good dude, isn't he? Yeah, I mean he, he just like he just is he just he it's like he bleeds Wisconsin. Yes, that is one. He is from the East Coast. He's from Boston. I met yeah. him through a friend. My friend, his son played quarterback at Boston. He was a backup while AJ was on the roster. 
they draft him and my friend calls me up he's like and i remember actually we had a conversation right before the draft because they were you know all the draft notice was like hey we never, we might draft this quarterback out of boston college blah 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 blase blase and he, then he gets drafted and then my friend calls me up hey man here's aj number give him a call introduce yourself i'm like and i did that right away called him up and he was a good talking like but like you said since he's been in i think he's his wife she, she's from her family like this part of door county you know very big fluent affluent family there they already have a kid and yeah he bleeds wisconsin green and go packer green and go <laughs> as <laughs> much as as much as like you go through the generations yeah like, so mark to our our wisconsin mark tauscher born and was born and raised in wisconsin yeah. wisconsin high school athlete all university of wisconsin Green, Green Green Bay Packer through and through, right? I mean, he. We always joke like you could be governor tomorrow. All you got to yes. do is run, right? Yes. And then uh, the next the next guy in line also he's a he's a he was our fullback radio show up there now. Um, who was oh, John now? Coon? John Coon is now kind of the next guy who's you know he's Wisconsin through and through now. Yep. And AJ is just starting so right. early in his journey. He's like, man, this. I hope he never gets traded. I don't no. know. I think I think his heart will break. You know what I mean? Ah, it's just like, yeah, I think the entire I think Wisconsin will just die a little bit inside of this guy gets traded. They just love him so much. He's, he's right. such a good dude. I'm definitely buying a book because I'm right. I'm about to start writing a book myself. A radio station down here I'm working with called The Ticket. Mm -hmm. um, I do some sports talk with some of my old teammates. You remember Jay Foreman? He was a linebacker. Mm -hmm. um, for Sean Jackson was a fullback. He didn't play long with us or in the league. I say, but. They got a, a program where they help the former athletes create a, you know books. So I'm like, I'm in. I want to start with a children's book too. So I'm gonna I'm gonna study up on it. I'm gonna get this and just take some notes on this to help me. That's out. a good idea. Yeah, for sure. I had the conversation with a bunch of I, I I have a Friday call with a bunch of NFL coaches. We just talk about various things that's going on in the in the league. Right. <clears throat> One of the things that came up this week was um, was. We're actually talking about the the, the hockey, and we we were quoting the uh, the NCAA hockey tournament. And it was it was the, the press conference, mm -hmm. and all these guys have. There's a certain way you should address a press conference, and there's certain you know certain things that you should point out. And if you're the if you're the underdog, if you're the favorite, you know how right. you should. And you know it was interesting because they there is a there's a method to everyone's madness on how you should do this, mm -hmm. and I found it, but it was very interesting because the weight that a lot of the people that I'm on the call with put into that press conference versus mm -hmm. how I viewed it as like mm -hmm. listening to like what I don't, I personally don't care at all what the coach says in the press conference. No, I, no. I never felt like a coach was communicating with us in a press conference. Now I know that a coach's job should be to, to communicate to every, you know, all you know, number one, my, my team. Yeah. Right. And then and then the opposing coach and their team and then the fans, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Right. But those are the most important things. So I, I get how important it is. But I just I was trying to think back and and remember a time where I really went like, oh, Holmgren or Sherm or any of these guys said something in the paper that right. made me feel a certain way or did or hadn't talked about it before or, or yeah. after in, in our meetings. Do you ever remember anything like that? Did it ever have an impact on you? No, nah. I say the only the only one thing that impacted me for the first half of my career being a young player yeah. was when Mike Holmgren made the comment that I was in this doghouse and I was a fumbler. Like he made that across okay. a, yeah. a big interview when I was a Seahawk, my rookie year. And it, it is it bothered me because I knew I wasn't a fumbler. And it just I was nervous. I was I was thinking well, you're about getting, you're 22 years old. You're getting right, 21. I'm 21. 21. Mm -hmm. my, my uh, rookie year. And my head coach, a guy that eventually I'm going to get to know, you know, in my head, I got to know Coach Osborne, got to know Frank Solich. We got close. You know, they were father figures to me. And so I was looking for that at the same at the next level. I think for me, high school, same thing. I talked to my high school coach until he passed away. And so we were close. So I looked at certain coaches being the head or my position coach, being somebody that I could call on and say, hey, I need to talk. I got some help. I need some help here in this, this situation. Thinking that ahead for any coach coming into the building, Dennis Erickson was the same way, along with Tim Lapano, who was my running backs coach, my rookie year. Then next year, Mike Homer comes in, and I think he brought a um, God, great running back. Can't think his name right now. It'll pop back in my head. Uh, but having those people in your room and in your head, knowing that, okay, these are guys that make you better, um, that is going to test you. They're going to push you, mm -hmm. asking questions or doing things in practice like um, – the telling a linebacker to strip at the ball more, or tell somebody to talk that that but you, you wanted make. a per, you wanted a personal 
you wanted a personal relationship with this person. I mean, to, not- just from a coaching standpoint of you're going to make me better. Not it have to. We don't have to be hanging out. You know, going to no. But I, I mean, like but there, you have a you have a good like. In other words, you had a good rapport. Correct. With all your high school, your college coaches, and so now you think, I, hey, listen, I'm. I'm I'm kind of a big I mean quite frankly you're you're kind of a big deal like you're going to be a good player people project you to be a good player Stump you have Mitchell. confidence Stump Mitchell was my running back coach and he was okay. a former NFL running back played for 10 years So now you was- now you have the likeness there and yep. so and so you're thinking okay I've got this great situation I got a, a guy that I can talk to speaks the same language I do you know mm-hmm. on, on the football field and now I want to have this good rela- I had a great relationship with Tom Osborne I want to have this great relationship with my coach and right. he comes out and says Something in the paper that he never really talks to. Maybe he says, "Hey, you got to stop fumbling," or "Hey, you're killing me," or something like that. Yeah. But he he takes in-house stuff and puts it out in in the public, and, and that is a absolute no-no. no-no. Don't do that for players. No, no, don't do that. So yeah, he lost me. <laughs> and I want, and I'm and you know me, Mike. Mm-hmm. You we've been teammates. We're friends. So you knew if if I didn't have the buy-in of the coach, then it's tough. You're you're questioning a coach before you question me, because you know me. I'm a I'm a team player, hundred percent, hundred all that. I'm gonna do whatever I need to do. Well, we're make we're this team we're player, yeah. I mean, and and we're players, so we're always gonna look at it like. I mean, here's the here's the truth about the NFL, it, and there's exceptions to this rule. And yeah. Right off the top it of my is. head, Bill Belichick, Mike Tomlin, Pete yeah, Carroll. Yeah. These are exceptions to the rule. When you have conversations with general managers, personnel guys, coaches. Um, depending on where they're at in their career, how much money they're making with what their job, what they feel their job security mm-hmm. is, you know, job security is, is better for coaches because they have guaranteed contracts Correct. than it is for players. But on the other side of that is the churn because there's only like, there's only 32 head coaches, right? Yeah. The churn for those guys versus like your perceived value versus theirs is actually it's a hard business for a coach. You see coaches get turned over a lot. And, it happens. and so when things are happening, they're always positioning, right? They're always positioning to have the narrative, to control the narrative. True. So, so if, if they True. lose a game and part of the narrative is like, so-and-so is fumbling a lot. So-and-so is giving up too many sacks. So, you know, whatever the case is, uh, things that are right. kind of out of their control and on, that narrative, does, that's a real thing. And sometimes, mm-hmm. like, Mike, you know, maybe he just – Mike's probably part of that and also thinks, like, hey, I'm great in the media. I'm a straight shooter, blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to say what's on my mind. Yeah. It's, it's not good. It's I mean, no. it's, it's it's really, really – it's just part of the built-in problem of being – it's a competitive business. It's hard, yeah. right? Yeah. And I'll say this. I'll say this. He did – when I saw him became a Packer, we played them in 03 when they came to us. You remember that home game? Oh, not yeah. the play, not the playoff game, but the regular season. Oh, game. The, we beat the brakes off. Him, exactly, yeah. and seven in, touchdowns. In, no, five touchdowns in a row. Something like that. And yeah. he did say he did come up to me in pregame, stop me, and yeah. said, "Amon," he said, "I know I was tough on you in Seattle, but you're doing a fantastic job here in Green Bay." He said, "So I'm happy for you." So he did settle little the little squirm mm-hmm. there. So and then on top of that, but check this out at halftime. Uh, I think it was Fleet comes up to me or Pep comes up to me and says, hey, no, it's Fleet. Pep or Pep Fleet comes up to me, he says, Amon. He said, hey, Mike, check one of me that he he came up to me and said, What's what's on Amon's little uh my little things that you know the 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 the, guard, the, the, um, the pad I had on my forearm? Is there any stick on there? Do y'all spray anything on him to make sure? Because he's holding on to the ball way too well. So I found that out <laughs> at halftime, and I'm like, okay. That's Mike. You 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 were on a good path, and then you just messed up. He was probably no, he's probably just trying to get a trade secret, man. No, either trying that to, or trying, just, to, trying to figure out for his guys. Exactly. He plays right. in the rain all the time. I right? know. Yeah, he had to figure out something for his team. I get like, that. Mike part. Mike Holmgren. It just made me laugh. Mike Holmgren was laugh. a great. Mike Holmgren is a great coach, and he's a great teacher. These oh, yeah. these sure. these things happen, and they're unfortunate. I, what's yeah. funny? Here's what's funny, Ag. Honestly. Yeah. So you had all these relationships with all these people. When I look back at my like the way that I am now and the way that I think about like when I talk about players and like, yeah. even young players, I had I had no coaching in high school, none. Right, right. I mean, oh. I literally didn't know the difference between man and zone. I I knew nothing. 
Mm. There was, I come from the worst program of anybody I ever played high or college or pro football with. Yeah. Not even close. Right. I had phenomenal coaches in college. I mean, just phenomenal human beings, mm -hmm. just great humans. Right. We ran the option. So I didn't know anything about football as far as like NFL style football, but I had these great, I mean, I had wonderful people around me, mentors, right. leaders. And then I got to the pros. My, my, we've talked about it. my first conversation yeah. with Mike Holmgren was I got dog cussed for holding out of camp. He told me I wouldn't play my first year. Tom Levat comes over and says, Hey, listen, sorry, man. I got to coach the players that are coaching. Try to pick up what you can. I'll see you next year. Right. I mean, that's, you, that's, that's how, that, that's the introduction to the league. So, you know, you're, yeah. you're looking for this, you're looking for this relationship. And then I had Beck who I had a terrible relationship for my first seven years or, you know, whatever. And I'm just going to myself, like, I wonder what my I wonder what my perspective on sports would be if I had any good relationships in my formative years or in the National Football. Right, and, and like I said, I was just looking for at least a, a good. Yeah. When I walk in the building, we can at least say hi to each other, look each other in the face. Yeah, from a, from a running back player to coach, that's yes. it. That's all I was looking for. I wasn't looking for going out for tea and coffee. No, on a you were looking for a barbecue partner. I was, yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't looking for a barbecue partner. No. But but people understand. People understand. Exactly. Listen, there, you, here's what here's all you want as a player, right? Honestly, you want you want for the coach to put you in a good position, position mm -hmm. to be successful, and then you want them to care enough about you to show you how to find that success. They can't exactly. give it to you, but they, you want them to care enough about you or care enough about their job, whatever you want to look at it, that they were going to show you how to do this thing because you want yep. you need to develop that tool set. So a hundred percent. There it is. I got one more thing for you. So <laughs> I, I just find these interesting. Back in the day, you used to talk about the wonder lick and somehow oh, yeah. this, the wonder lick, and then there was the AIQ and now there's this S2 cognition test. Okay. okay. And they nice. all measure like Wonder Lick was supposed to be an intelligence test. And then the AIQ is like um it, it how how you process shapes information and then the S2 is like that, but it it's going it's it's more time resistant, so or or time sensitive. So it's right. how fast you can process information. Like if you flash up a screen and there's there's a you know there's four corners of a square. Which one isn't green, for example? How long does it take you to figure out which one it is? Got it. So the test like that, right? So there's speed and there's cognition or there's a there, there's your ability to kind of uh, identify and then process information as fast as you can. So obviously, mm -hmm. from a quarterback standpoint, that would be very interesting from, from everybody's is. standpoint, from that, quarterback so. especially, right? Right. But this information... So Daniel Jeremiah, who's an NFL uh, network guy, came out and yeah. said, like, Bryce Young got the highest score on this. And mm -hmm. there's there's kind of two things. One, I the Wonder Look, I know the AIQ and the Wonder Look pretty well. And there's 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 serious, serious flaws, obviously, in both. Mm -hmm. I don't know about this one. There's gonna be flaws in any test. That's you know, fair enough. Right. Right. But but they're they're right. good, but there's also you can poke a lot of holes in this stuff. Um, I hate that these get leaked because they become talking points. You know, course, even if yeah. even if you're the top guy, it's like, well, then now you're, now who who's going to suffer because of this? You know, mm -hmm. how's more information to come out? And the thing that really that when we have these conversations, and you think about it as a fan, you think about it as as, a, as an athlete, none of these tests so far. I'm talking about really wondering the ARQ. I don't really know about this test. Mm -hmm. None of these tests put you on a pathway to becoming a better person, becoming a better version of yourself. So right. in other words, I get this information. And it's like, it's like, well, AG, you know, you don't write really well with your right hand. Okay, well, what do I do? You know, it's like, oh, well, I'm just telling you that you can't write on your right hand. Like, sorry, man. Like, I guess, right. I guess you're not going to be a good running back. Or you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no, there's no, there's no um, developmental process because, no. like, you give a coach information, like, hey, uh, um, Amon doesn't process this, or he's this kind of, you know, he's a. He's this kind of person and not that mm. kind of, he's this kind of processor and a visual or you know, right. audio or, or audio. Or correct. Right. So it's like, they're like, okay, great. Well, should I draft him? Well, like, <laughs> yeah, you can draft him, but you have to understand that he's going to have to learn this way. Like they, they don't go that extra mile with these guys because they want to exactly. sell that, that, that platform product. as like, yes, hey, I'm gonna come help, yeah, it's, I'm going to come help you how to do this. But then, you know, shoot, 80% of the teams don't use it. They just go, oh, this guy tested low. Like, he's unsalvageable. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like, these are these are tough. This is a tough thing. Yeah, I mean, you you're getting this is more analytic. This numbers, you know, more numbers in a certain way mentally. I mostly mentally and conjectively in terms of how they process stuff, fast or slow, good or bad. But you know, at the end of the day, I know I'll be like, hey, can they play football? <laughs> that's, I'll be like, you know, that's what I'm looking at. You know, between the numbers, like I said, there's one or two numbers that's going to tell me I'm a, I got a good D lineman, I got a good offensive tackle, guard, running back, wide receiver. But then also as a player, obviously, this is testing more of the human being they are and how they function, brain, you know, mind, and, and how they morally might pick things, or because that's how the world, you know, Wonder League test and some of the other tests the NFL has us take when we could before we get drafted. You know, you remember teach the 400. 400 question giant yeah, test from the giant test health. yeah you know uh what do you you know do you paint your rooms pink and orange and what do you do you know stuff like that that at the end of the day it's like okay we are interviewing people that we want to come work for basically a fortune 500 company mm -hmm. um i want to do yes i do want, want to know some of these things but some of these things there's not going to determine my decision when it comes down to me making a decision i'm gonna consider like okay now i know I'll tell the coaches, hey, he, he, he's more of a visual learner than an audio learner. I might do that because obviously that might help that player get better. Me For me as a GM, relating that message to the, to the coaches. But at the end of the day, I want to just – I want a football player. I know what a football player looks and sounds like. Look, you know, and so I get that question or I get these answers back on this wonder lick. I'm going to just go through it and with a fine-tooth comb because I'll have time. It'd be my job to do that and find out what ones that matter to me that makes sense in terms of this player and this test being a narrative of why I pick them or not pick them, you know, make it more tangible. It got to be more tangible than just saying, okay, this person, you know, they, like you said, can't write with his right hand, but he's left hand. He's left handed anyway. So why would he write with his hand? I'm going to ask that question. Context yeah. matters, right? Exactly. So the, con the context of all this stuff matters. And exactly. I mean, just really simply, I think all this stuff's, all this stuff has the potential to be extremely valuable. Yeah. If you does. understand contextually what it means, exactly. and if you're and if you're and if you're dedicated to taking the information, because if if you if you receive the information, if you allow yourself to receive the information, there's no way that it's not going to bias your 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 influence your, your decision making, right? Exactly. If you have the information, it's going to bias you whether you know it or not. So, if you're going to receive the information, then you have to be willing to go through the steps that it takes mm -hmm. in order to to understand it. improve that person's situation if you decide to bring them into the building. Exactly. And that's where I think for from a player standpoint, you go, don't use, like, don't, I don't even want to take this test unless you're going to give me something back. Like, Correct. I don't want to take an AIQ test or an S2. I don't want to take the test, and I'm good at tests, but I don't want to take the test unless you're going to give me something back that helps me improve me. Exactly. If you're just going to take a As test a to make me to, to have me be judged, you know, nah. that doesn't help me. No. Nope. What do you like? If I if I go to the combine and I do all these tests, bench press, jump, I somebody's going to I can go to anybody and go. Here's my results. They can go. Okay, good. Here's how we're going to help you get better. If you're not willing to do that with this, like as as a player, as mm -hmm. you know, as a developmental coach, as an organization, I would start pushing back a little bit and going, we got to make sure we're doing right by these guys because this stuff can really damage the, the way that people are viewed when most yeah. of it can, most of it can be um, improved on. Exactly. So, you know, define exactly what these tests are, are pulling out of a player. And as you're a GM or you're a coach looking at it, because if you don't define it and you're just looking at numbers, you're going to see one numbers that's going to freak you out and you don't have the definition of it, then yeah, don't waste your time with it. But if you're going to take your time defining what all these numbers mean, to a player and decision making and how they how they uh, process everything that comes at them through their eyes and out, out their mouth then do then and then that means you're you're committing to this test and understanding everything about the test every question and what they're pulling out all the little data that i'm gonna have somebody sit there and tell me what okay what's this data mark for what's this data mark for okay then i'll in my head then i'm like all right this is what i'm gonna look for when i'm looking at this test because i i know what this test means to make sure I find a player that I want mentally, obviously, and then physically from the combine. So outside of that. If you if you got if you were watching tape, let's say you're watching tape on a quarterback. Yep. You see what kind of throws they make, you see what mm -hmm. kind of you, know, you can kind of pick mm -hmm. it up on tape. Yep. And then you got a, 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 cog, a cognition test and it and it it rang true 
with some of the things you saw on tape. So in other words, maybe this person has a hard time tracking from right to left versus left to right. Maybe right. this person has a hard time identifying when players go behind other players. Yeah, their depth. To... Oh, their depth. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe this you... player is a risk risk taker. You it, know. Yeah. Or yeah. Or it could be like behavioral stuff. Exactly. When you see that as a coach and you love the talent and you love the kid, you love the interview, you love everything. He's got the physical tools and you're looking at this. Are you, are you probably, are you, I mean, I think you're going to, I think this is a self answer. Yeah. Are you going to try to build your offense around only the stuff he does well? Like, are you going to have to switch your route combinations? Or are you going to have to, are, is he going to do some more static stuff or, or, are you going to try to figure out how to help this person process these things that he might be a little bit deficient in, in order for him to be able to run anything that is required? Exactly. That's what I'm doing. The second part, second, second option there, because obviously I'm making that player better. They already got stuff. They already mastered it from the high school to the college level. Now this is the pro level where you got to learn. Basically you learn how you got to be a jet. You got to know everything. Especially as a quarterback, you got to know everything, the physical stuff that you have to do. But then offensively, you got to understand all the checks and the audibles for every wide receiver, their routes, combination versus different, you know, presses or defenses from a defense, man press one or cover two or cover three or just disguising things. And, you know, all the changes that happens if that's in front of a receiver, you got to know that as a QB. So I would teach them that, hey, these are the things that you could do to get better and know everything that you need to know as an NFL quarterback, a high efficiency, high thinking processing quarterback in the NFL, in the, in the league. So, so let, let's take this, let's take this from the, let's use Jordan Love as an example. Let's say you had some of this information. Mm -hmm. He's a first year starter this year. <clears throat> You're probably already going to scale back the Aaron Rodgers offense. You're probably going yeah, to run, you're, you're run more play action. There's probably going to be some more set stuff at the line of scrimmage, more RPOs, like things that are very, like play action. For those out there who don't, the reason we say play action, you turn your back to the defense. When you turn back around, it's just a read progression. Like you don't have to start like, oh, they're running six, they're running eight, they're running two, they're running, you know, robber. You don't have to worry about that. You just go, okay, I'm going one, two, three, here, I'm throwing the ball. Yeah. Right. So it, the progression is a little bit easier. That's why a lot of people like to run, especially like the turn your back play action, deep stuff. Yeah. Um, the RPO stuff, the, the read becomes very, very simple. Comparatively speaking to some of the more complex defenses, like I can either hand the ball off if the linebacker pulls, I'm just going to, I'm going to pull the ball and, and run or mm -hmm. I'm going to throw it, etc. Okay. So what you're saying is, and I think I agree with you is I would up the amount of play action. I would up all the run game, play action, yeah. pass, RPOs. I'd up all that because it's a young quarterback. And if I knew any of this, and we're not saying that Jordan Love has any of this stuff, but if we knew right. this hypothetically, they have, right. they have some processing issue with this, I would be working around the clock in the shadows because remember, we still got to win football games. Yep. We just talked about it, like the coach can get fired fast. Exactly. Right? But I'd be working around the clock in the shadows of not allowing this person to get to his second third or fourth year starting the national football league and not being competent or exceptional at some of these other things yeah yeah so just making them comfortable with the offense yeah. and once they get once the one level gets verbatim for them where they got it and then you see like when you've given them the quarterback test pre-game and they're getting 100 percent on this progression read to to the zone or to the audibles that you got to adjust as a quarterback at the line of scrimmage pre-snap then I'll, like, I'll just ask them, hey, uh, how comfortable you are going to, you know, I'm going to throw this next package in. You know, it's a, it's a two minute now where everything is off the ball. There's no huddling. And now you got to really speak to your receivers and they got to be on the same page with you of understanding the understanding coverages. Are you ready for that? That's basically what I'll ask them. And he says, coach, you know what? Yeah, I'm comfortable with this, that and the other. Yeah, give me that. I want to see how that works. And, you know, this slowly again, how I introduced the play action, introduce this next package, this two minute package or this, uh, you know, last minute to win the game package of all pass plays that you got to do. That means you got to be aware of how the pass routes have to break out to get out of bounds faster than because you have no timeouts or you're very low on timeouts. You might have one or two. So you want to make sure of that. So coming back. Uh oh, lost you.
Where you going, Mike? There you go. Oh. <laughs> You're still here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. Well, I listen, I guess it's a tough sport. But yep. I, what you just said is is a microcosm of why the draft is so important. Mm -hmm. Like and why they put so much work into it. Cause sometimes we poop on, you know, but that's that's why. Yeah. You know, you think about it. AG, tell everybody where you can find you, man. Good show yeah. today. Yeah, man. Find me on uh, Instagram and Twitter, Amon Green 30, and on TikTok at Amon Green's Gamers Lounge, Gamers Lounge for my gaming uh, podcast where I talk about the video game world and the industry and all the fun stuff going there. What time? Uh, 11, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time live on Twitch and YouTube. Mike Wall 68 on Twitter, process to perform on Instagram. Amon, pleasure as always, my man. Have a great week. We'll see yep. all you out there in Packer Nation next week. All right.